Welcome to the Cursory Tracker tutorial. In this episode, we'll be learning how to set up the CRT add-on, upload CRT add-on data to Wowstat, and editing that data with the tracker's controls. I'll be working under the assumption that you know the basics of what the CRT does and how a DKP system works. To learn more about that, please refer to the link above. Also, this guide is targeted at DKP administrators who will need the Can Manage DKP permission to use the functions we'll be covering. Please be warned, this is a fairly long guide. To begin, please make sure that you have the add-on tracking option selected in the Create Pool page. This will give you the option to download the Curse Rate Tracker add-on from curse.com. Download the add-on manually or with the Curse client and make sure that it is installed. Before logging in, first confirm that the Curse Rate Tracker add-on is enabled in your add-ons menu. You can check this by clicking on the add-ons button in the bottom left corner of your character select screen. Make sure that it is checked. Once logged in, open the CRT by clicking on the CRT button on your minimap or typing slash CRT. You should see a blank pool form, which will now fill out. First, you need to name your pool. In this example, we'll be using Legion's 10-man rating dash add-on as the pool name to indicate that it'll be tracking our 10-man raid using the add-on. Next, you need to name your currency. We'll simply use points for this demonstration. Next, you need to select your loot method. The CRT supports fixed price, open bid, closed bid, and loot council for the way of distributing loot. We do so in order to cater to the largest variety of guild possible. Please note that loot council actually doesn't track anything other than what drops and who gets it, so that there will be no sort of DKP income in this case. After selecting a loot method, you have to select an income method, which is how players earn DKP in your raid. We support boss-based income, time-based income, zero-sum, and run-based attendance. So essentially, just choose whatever is right for your guild. Once you've selected the income and loot method that's right for you, hit the Create button, and you'll be ready to begin tracking. Once you're in a group or a raid, you'll have the option to begin tracking a raid using the CRT. To do so, right-click on the minimap icon of the CRT and select the Start button. You'll be prompted at that point to name the raid that you wish to track. I personally like to go with the name of the instance we're doing, as well as the date, so it'll be memorable. But use whatever means you wish. Once actively tracking a raid, you can go to the Situation tab select the raid from the drop-down menu, and actually see the data in live time. When actively tracking a raid, you'll be able to right-click the CRT minimap icon to pause, unpause, and stop the raid. Please make sure to use the stop option to end the raid, as logging out will just pause the raid tracking instead of actually stopping it. Once you've stopped the raid, you'll need to log out, or slash reload your UI to record the data to the Curse Rate Tracker Save Variables file. Now that we have some RAID data, we need to figure out how to get it from your Save Variables file to your Wowstead website. To do so, you have two options. The first option is to use the Curse client to automatically upload the add-on's Save Variable file data when you log out. First, you must log into the Curse client, go to the Tools Options menu, go to the Plugins tab, and then make sure that the When I Play World of Warcraft Sync My Guild Raid Attendance and Guild Bank option is checked. That means every time you'll log out and there is new save variables data, it will attempt to actually upload the data to your guild site. The second option is to manually upload the save variables file yourself using the Wowstead control panel. In order to do so, you need to go to the Raid Tracker page in your control panel and manually point to the curse rate tracker save variable file. This is in your World of Warcraft WTF account, your WoW account, and then the save variables folder. You'll be able to make sure that it, the last date modified should be when you logged out. So select that and hit submit to manually upload it. Please note that for both options, 
the parser may take several minutes to actually parse your data so you can check to see whether or not you have any data uploaded using the guild upload history or your personal upload history buttons in this control panel. Now that the data has been parsed, if you go to the RAID Tracker link, it should take you to the dashboard page, which has a summary of your standings, attendance, item distribution, loot drops, and transactions. To ever change a pool, use the drop down in the upper right hand corner. Now, because our test pool in this case was fairly sparsely populated, I'm actually going to show you real raid data from one of our Blackwing Descent raids in our 10 man. So here you can actually see that there is actually some raid data, there's a raid, item distribution, standings and attendance, all that good stuff. In order to view the details of any of these sections from the dashboard, click the view all link in each section. This dashboard does more than just give you an idea of what's going on in your pool. You can actually manage your loot drops, your transactions, and your raid from this screen. In order to do so, go to the admin buttons on the left hand column. Not only can you delete transactions, you can click the edit icon next to the delete icon in order to either reassign an item, change the item to something else, or change the cost of an item. To view the details of a particular raid, simply click on the raid's name in that raid table. Here you can see a summary of everything that went on during the raid. You can see a guild rank, how much a character earned, how much they spent, what items dropped, all specific to this particular raid. You can do the same inline editing on this raid details page, or you can click the edit button at the upper right to get a more detailed edit function, where you can add loot drops, add adjustments, and um, have a bit more precise control over exactly what you want to do. In this case, I've giving out a 15 DKP penalty to our feral druid for being late. One of the more useful functions in this edit raid page is being able to move attendees back and forth out of the raid. For example, if something is accidentally missed from the raid, you can select them from the guild member list on the left and click the arrow buttons to move them into the raid. Or you can select them on the right and click the arrow buttons again to move them out of the raid. This is very handy if for one, whatever reason the add-on didn't track the person in the raid. You're also able to add loot drops just in case something dropped that wasn't picked up by the add-on. To do so, simply select the character from the drop-down menu, enter the cost of the item, and begin typing in the item, and then selecting from the drop-down menu that follows. Hit the add button, and there you have it. To get back to the dashboard view, simply click the name of the pool in the breadcrumbs at the top of the page. Thanks for watching the Cursory Tracker add on tracking tutorial. You should now be able to download the CRT add on set it up in game, transfer the data to the site, and edit the information in the raid tracker tool. I hope you found this useful. Happy tracking.